Meningococcal meningitis is a bacterial form of meningitis that causes swelling and inflammation of the membranes covering the brain and spinal cord. It is caused by a bacteria called Neisseria meningitidis, which naturally resides behind the nose and throat. When the bacteria breaks through the protective lining of the nose and throat and enters the bloodstream, the person contracts the illness. Once in the bloodstream, the bacteria travel to the meningitis membrane, which is the area surrounding the brain and spinal cord. From here, the bacteria enters the cerebrospinal fluid. It is here in the cerebrospinal fluid where the bacteria multiply freely and release poisons that cause swelling and inflammation in the meninges and the brain tissue. A rash may appear on the body. The infection causes shock, organ failure, gangrene, loss of limbs, or even death. The person affected by meningococcal meningitis may experience nausea, photophobia, severe headache, stiff neck, and drowsiness, among other symptoms. The bacteria can spread through direct contact with nose and throat secretions, such as sharing a glass, cup, or eating utensils, kissing, coughing, or sneezing into the face of another person, or examples of how contact with another person's respiratory secretions might occur. Additionally, other behavioral factors can influence the risk of getting the infection, such as smoking, exposure to secondhand smoke, excessive alcohol consumption, fraternities and bar patronage, among others. College freshmen who live in the dormitories or people who live in a communal setting such as the military are especially at risk of getting this infection. Further, people in the same household or daycare center or anyone with direct contact with the patient's oral secretions such as a boyfriend or girlfriend will be considered at increased risk of getting the infection. On average, meningitis affects only thousands of people nationwide each year, with people between the ages of 15 and 24 years old accounting for one-fifth of all cases. Based on the statistics, students might dismiss the severity of the infection as less serious. But while the bacterial infection is relatively rare, it is also deadly, killing 10 to 12 percent of those it infects, sometimes within hours. One such college student, Ashley Lee, unfortunately learned about meningococcal meningitis until after she was diagnosed with it. However, she is fortunate enough to tell her story today. I just remember thinking to myself, you know, I will never forget how much this hurts. Now that I know about the disease, it's like it was going through my whole body. You know, like, it was attacking me. And if I would have been aware of what the disease can do and how debilitating it could be, I would have made sure that somehow I got that vaccination before I went to school. And people just don't know, and they need to know, they need to know the gruesome facts, they need to know that... You know, it attacks your limbs, it could take your life, and most people don't survive through it, and that's why many people don't talk about it, I think, because the people who are affected who do get this disease die. In order to reduce your chance of contracting meningococcal meningitis, there are a variety of healthy behaviors that you can adopt. You should start by eating a balanced diet and get an adequate amount of sleep to boost your immune system. You should avoid sharing drinks and cigarettes with other people as the disease is spread through direct contact with nose and throat secretions. You should also avoid smoking as well as exposure to secondhand smoke. This is due to the fact that tobacco use is known to increase one's susceptibility of contracting bacterial infections. Last but not the least, wash your hands. The nurse manager at the University Health Services at Penn State tells us why this is a concern for college students. It's a concern definitely for college students, especially incoming freshmen. We see, for some reason, they're more prone to developing meningococcal meningitis. The reason it's so important is because it can have some very long-term consequences. There can be loss of limbs, there can even be loss of lives from meningococcal meningitis. The vaccine has been found to be pretty, very effective in preventing meningococcal meningitis for this group of people. But it's not 100%. No vaccine is 100%. Having the vaccine, though, is extremely helpful. In addition, doing the same, the things that your parents have told you all along, wash your hands, don't share drinks and food with other people, those are all common sense things that can help prevent the spread of this infection as well. And students can schedule an appointment with a nurse here at University Health Services to get the vaccine. If you have not been immunized against meningococcal meningitis, make sure you are. That's the best thing you can do. Vaccines have saved hundreds and thousands of lives. Please make sure you're immunized.